Hey everybody, in this Ruby on Rails tutorial series, we're going to be creating a book review application from start to finish. Users of this application will be able to sign up for an account, sign in and sign out. Users will also have the ability to add a new book, and for each book, a user will have the ability to add a review. Every time a user adds a book, the book will be associated with an image, a category, and some basic information. When a user creates a review, you will have a five-star rating and a comment. To create a book, there will be a link up in the nav bar where you'll link to a book form. We'll be able to select the category for the book and also choose a file image to upload. There will also be some information here, the basic information about the book. In the home page, we're going to loop through all the books and display them. And up here, we'll also have a link to filter by category. So if we just want to see the books that are in the technology category, we can click here and we'll see just those books that are in the technology category. To add a review to a book, you can simply click on the book, scroll down, and you'll see an add review button right here. That review button, you'll be able to add a rating based on a five star system and add a comment. Also, on the book show page, we're going to have an average rating section, which is going to determine the average rating based on the number of reviews that are currently present. I'm going to split this tutorial series up into four parts. The first part being this video, we're going to add the functionality for creating, showing, updating, and deleting a book. In the second part, we're going to add users to our application using the devised gem. And we're also going to add the categories and the filtering functionality to our application. In part three, we're going to add the ability for users to upload an image when they create a book. To achieve this, we're going to, I'm going to walk through the process of adding the paperclip gem. And we're also going to add some basic layout styles. As we see here, we're going to uh, show all the images here on the root page. And in part four, we're going to add the ability for users to add a review and a rating to the books. We're also going to add the average rating section, which you saw right here. And we're also going to make sure we use a five star system. And to finish, we're going to add some CSS styles and finish up the layout. All right, so without any more delay, let's get into building this. All right, so the first step in creating a new Rails application is to run the Rails new command. But first, what we need to do is we need to change our directory into where we want to create our Rails application. So for me, it's going to be a folder on my desktop called Screencasts. And in here, I'm going to run the Rails new followed by the name of the Rails application we want to create. In this case, it's going to be book review, but it can be whatever application you're making. So we'll run that command. And what that's going to do is it's going to fetch all these files that create sort of the starting structure for any Rails application. And once we get all these files ready to go, what we're going to do is we're going to CD. Okay, here we're going to CD into the application we just made. And before anything, I'm actually going to initialize a Git repository. You do not need to use Git to follow along. Git is just a version control system, which I'm going to use to push this up to GitHub. So when I'm finished, you guys can access the style sheets and access all the code. So I'm going to run a Git status. And we have all these untracked files. So this is a really quick overview of Git. When you add something, files become untracked. And when you add a file, you have to add it with git add dot and then I'm going to commit my git with the repository I mean with the message initial commit alright so now that our app is ready to go um, as we saw from the intro our books have a title they're gonna have a description and they're gonna have an author so let's create um, a rails model to represent each book so rails models are the way we represent I guess you can think of them as objects in Ruby on Rails. So we're gonna run the command Rails generate model, followed by the name of the model, and in this case it's gonna be book. And after we name the name of our model, we follow it up with attributes that the model is gonna have. And as we said, it's gonna have a title, which is a string, a description, which is gonna be text, and an author, which is also gonna be a string. And we're gonna run this command, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna create files for us. It's going to create a model file, it's going to create a migration file, and those are really the only two we have to worry about right now. So right here we can see that we have a migration file which is creating books. We'll take a look at that in a second. And we have our app model file book.rb. So I went ahead and I opened up our application in Sublime Text 
any text editor will do. I'm just using Sublime Text for preference. And let's take a look at those files that we created from the generate model command. So if we look into the, the db migrate directory, we're going to see a create table books. Now, when you create a model, as you can see up here, we're calling it book, which is singular. But it's going to correspond to a table in the database, which is plural, in this case, books. And what we have is we have our title attribute, we have our description attribute, and we have our author attribute. And each has the attribute type that we specified. This line down here is going to create um, a created at and updated at attribute for our books table, but we're not going to worry about that too much. And the other file it created was under our app directory. And this app directory is where all of our application specific code is going to live. So we're going to be spending most of our time in here. We're going to spend some time in config, um, some time in DB, and some time in the gem file. But everything else we really don't have to worry about. But in our app directory, we go into models and we're going to see book right here. Every other model we create will appear here as well. But we can see this is pretty underwhelming. It's blank for now. But we'll be filling that in with some associations later on. So let's back out of these and let's go back to our terminal. And when you create a new model um, and when you make changes to your database, you have to sort of update it so our application knows the most current database. And to do that, we're going to run a command called rake db migrate. And what this is going to do is it's going to, well, update your database, your app database, with the most recent changes we've made. Because if you don't run rake db, rake db migrate, you're going to get a pending migrations error in our browser. And saying that, let's go over and make sure everything's working. And actually, we need to start a Rails server. So I'm going to create a new tab with command T on a Mac. We're going to run the command Rails server. Make sure you're in your application directory that you created. In our case, it was book review. And you run Rails server. And we'll see that it's creating a development sort of viewing environment on localhost 3000. So we'll swing over to our browser, open up localhost 3000. And we'll get welcome aboard. You're writing Ruby on Rails. Awesome. Now you didn't need to create a model for this to work. I just did this sort of a step late. But all right. So with the Rails server going and our model up, what we need to do now is we need to create a controller. Now a controller in Ruby on Rails is sort of the house for all of the actions. And actions include you know index, new, create, edit, update, and destroy. We're not going to be creating any. Um, different actions. We're going to be using sort of the based RESTful architecture for Ruby on Rails. And we're going to create a controller and that's going to house all those actions. And those actions correspond to views in our um, view templates. So index.html.erb, new.html.erb, etc. So what we're going to do to that is we're going to run Rails generate. And this time we're going to generate a controller. And we're going to call it books. Now you may notice that the controller name is plural. That's a convention. Controller names are plural and model names are singular. So we'll run that and that's going to create our controllers file right here, books controller. It's going to create some test files and other stuff we're not going to worry about too much right now. It's also going to create our views directory for books, which is where we're going to put our view templates corresponding to the actions in the books controller. So let's swing over to Sublime and check out those files that were created. We go into controllers, we'll see books controller, which is empty. And when we go into views, we'll see the books directory, which is also empty. Before we add any actions to this books controller, let's check out the routes we have for our application. And our routes will live in the config directory in the routes.rb file. Now you're going to have a lot of these pre-populated comments, so we can just get rid of those. They basically tell you everything you need to know, so you can read those if you want. But what we're going to do is we're going to define some routes for our application. And the routes correspond to, in basic terms, the URLs we visit. They're going to correspond to the routes we have defined here. So if we go into our terminal and we run a command called rake routes, this would display all the routes we have for our application. But as you see, we don't have any routes defined. That's because our routes file is blank. So what we're going to do is we're going to define what's called a RESTful route. And a RESTful route in Rails is basically a single line command that generates um, all the corresponding URLs we're going to need for a specific controller. So if we're going to, to do that, we're going to do resources, books. Resources is just a keyword here, and books is going to be the name of our controller or table. So we're going to swing back over now, and we're going to run rake routes again. Now the thing we want to achieve here is we want to have 
all these restful routes which we see here and we also want to create a root path and our root path is going to is going to display all of our books as you saw in the beginning and that's going to correspond to our index action right here you'll see the new action on the books controller and that corresponds to the URL slash books slash new so if we visited that in a browser we would get our new action so let's do that right now we're obviously going to get an error because we don't have any actions or templates to find but just to show you that the routes are now working here we go we'll get the action new cannot be found but that is associating it with the the new action and then we have all the other ones which have URLs as well but like I said we want to make the index action our root path so to do that we're gonna go back into the routes file and we're gonna run root followed by the name of our controller which is books and then we're gonna follow that with the action we want books slash index or hash index so now if we go back over and run rake routes again we'll see one more sort of route here and here it is root root gets slash which is the which sort of defines our root path and it is corresponding to the books hash index action all right awesome so now let's fill out the index action in our books controller just so we can see our stuff's working so if we define the index action and we swing back over here and go to our root path we're gonna get a template is missing file now when we visited the new the book slash new we got a action is missing but since we added our index action now we're missing our template so to add our template we're gonna go into our books folder here in views and we're gonna create a new file in this case it's gonna be index.html.erb and we're just gonna fill in some place text right there we'll just do index view and we'll swing back over to our browser refresh and we should see index view this is because the index.html.erb the extension html.erb is our template file so we're rendering our index.html.erb file in our new or in our index action here all right so now what we want to do is we want to add some gems to our application our gems will live in our gem file here and as you can see we have a lot of gems already in here to put it simply gems are essentially just libraries of functionality that we can add to our application we're going to be using the simple form gem and we're going to be using bootstrap sass to get these gems we're going to swing over to our browser again and go to rubygems.org and let's just search for the gems we want in this case simple form simple form is going to be what we're going to be using to create new books create new reviews it just provides a nice easy structure to fill for the user to fill out information so we're going to go to simple form and what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the right column and grab the gem file um, gem link we're going to copy it to clipboard we'll come back over here and first let's clean up these um, gem comments here these comments have some useful information so again if you have some time just like the the routes comments go ahead and read them they can help you get uh, jump started here and now we're gonna go and paste in the simple form gem so we have the simple form and now I'm actually gonna keep that open so I can save some time and we're gonna get bootstrap SAS bootstrap SAS is the bootstrap framework from Twitter but it's ported from its native preprocessing language, which is less, and it's uh, ported to SAS. So we're gonna grab the gem file again, and we're gonna paste that in. All right, so when you add new gems to your gem file, you have to let your application know that you wanna use those. So to do that, we're gonna go back into our terminal, and we're gonna a command called bundle install. And this is basically gonna tell our application, hey, we wanna use SAS Rails right here, and we wanna use Bootstrap SAS not SAS Rails, we already had that, that was a default gem, simple form, my mistake. Okay, so now that we have those being used, we actually need to get them installed. So we're gonna start with simple form, and to do simple form, we're gonna go to the home page link here, it's gonna take you to the GitHub page. And if we scroll down, we'll see the installation instructions, and we added it to our gem file, we bundle install, now we need to run the generator. The generator is basically gonna allow us to use simple form. In our case, we're using Bootstrap, so let's just use this code right here. Rails generate simple form install Bootstrap. So if we go to our terminal and type that in, Rails generate simple form install with the Bootstrap flag, it will allow us to use Bootstrap or use um, simple form. And now that is everything. Awesome. 
So we can get out a simple form. Actually, I'll leave it up here because this is the syntax we're going to be using for it. But let's get Bootstrap SAS working now. Go to the home page link. And there's a few things we need to do here. We have the gem. And we need to import the Bootstrap styles in our application.scss file. So the first thing we need to do is actually change. Um, by default, our CSS file is only a CSS extension. But since we're using SAS, we need to change it to a .css extension. So let's grab the import statements here. And let's go back over to our Sublime Text um, folder here. And let's go into our style sheets, application.css. And all of our images, JavaScripts, and style sheets live in the assets directory of app. So let's paste that in right here. And what we need to do now is let's rename the extension and do s.scss. All right, so we can get rid of that for now. And next thing we need to do is add a, I believe it's a JavaScript, yes, require, jo require bootstrap sprockets. Now this is going to be inserted in our JavaScripts application.js file. So we go to JavaScripts application.js. And since we already have jQuery, we don't need to require that as well. So we'll just paste that right in. And that's everything. So one thing you should always do when you add a new gem or add some import statements and whatnot, um, it's always a good idea to restart your server. So to do that, we're going to do Control C on a Mac, and we're going to hit the up arrow and start the Rails server again. So now when we come back over to our browser, we should see that text that we added to our index view. It should have that bootstrap typography. So we'll refresh, and it takes a little bit when you add new gems. So we should see that bootstrap styling, and there it is. All right, everything's looking good so far. So now we're, what we're gonna do is we're going to add the ability to create, or for a user to create new books. So to do that, we're gonna start in our books controller. And now when you're adding a functionality to create something new or having a user have the ability to create a new book, create a new movie, whatever it is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some space here and we're gonna find two actions. One's gonna be the new action, and one's going to be the create action. And you denote action just by the syntax define name of the action end. So what we're going to do is when we create a new book, we're going to denote that by app book gets book dot new. Now here app book denotes an instance variable. And instance variables are very important to our application because instance variables are what we use in our views. So at book right here will be available to use in, well, in this case, the new.html.erb view template. So we're going to create now, and create is going to be the same as book, but it's going to accept something called our book params. So we're going to do at book gets book.new, but it's going to accept book params. Now we haven't defined book params yet, but let's do that right now. Book params, we're going to put in a private method because we're going to be using this also in the update action in the future. So we'll go to private and we'll define this as book params. We'll end that. And now what book params is, it's when a user fills in information and sends a request, it's going to be passed with the information the user filled out in a form. So we're going to basically define the information that the user can fill out and what we want to be able to use. So we're going to do params that require and we're going to require the name of our model so book and we're going to permit the attributes we want now we don't have to permit them all but in our case we do we're going to do title description and I think the other one was author and again if you can't remember all that you can just swing into your um, DB file here migrate the create books and yes we have title description and author awesome so I'm going to clean up some of these here Okay, so now that we have our book params defined, let's go and create a new template, new view template here for our books. So we'll define that as new.html.erb. Let's put a little text in here just called new book. And now remember, if we go over to here into our terminal and look at our rake routes, the route for that corresponds to the new action in the books controller is slash books slash new. So let's go visit that slash books slash new and we'll see new book. Now this, the reason we're getting this is because we're rendering the new.html.erb view template. Awesome. 
So what we want to do is we want to add a form here in this new.html.erb file for creating a new form or creating a new book. So what we're going to do, um, we're actually not going to put the form directly in there. We're going to create what's called a form parcel. And this form parcel is going to house our form. And to denote a partial, you just uh, prefix the name with an underscore. So we create form.html.erb. What we're going to do in here is we're going to use that simple form gem we installed to create a form for users to create a new book. So to start, we're going to do simple form for, and it's, this is going to be for a book. Now, when I said that we had the instance variable available to use in our new action or a new view, if you look over here, we have at book gets book.new. We can use that in here because we're going to be rendering the form in the new view. So we can use at book. We're going to do F. Now, this syntax corresponds to what's presented down here simple form for at blank do F. Okay. So let's go back over. I'm going to do next. We're going to do input fields for all of our attributes. So we're going to do f.input title. But I'm actually going to have this represented as book title. Now, by default, the input field will have a label corresponding to the attribute name, but we can specify a different one with the label value. So we're also going to add one for description. We're going to leave that as description. Oh, f.input description sorry about that and the last and the next one is going to be an input for author and we're going to add a button that a user can click to submit all the information that he passed in so we'd f dot button this is going to be a submit button now to render that we'll go over to our new .html.arb and we'll do render form the form is going to correspond to our form partial so if we go over here and we refresh, we'll see the form that we created with the nice bootstrap styling. Awesome. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to, when we submit the form, we want it to, well, create a new book. But if we go over here right now, and I'm just going to fill in some dummy text just to show you that it's not going to work in our current state. We'll create a book, and we're going to see a template is missing. Now, if you're um, following along, you'll see that the create .html.erb file would be our corresponding view template, but we're not actually going to create a create view template. Instead of creating one of those, we're actually going to redirect if the book is created. So we're going to go in, back into our create action. I'm going to write if the book save, which meaning for us is created, we're going to redirect to the root path. Now the root path corresponds if we look over here we'll see root and the root is the index action on books with the slash URL now these prefixes right here if we add an underscore path that's what we're going to be using in our link to's and our redirects so root underscore path corresponds to the books index action which is our home page aka our root path and if the book does not save we're going to render a new form all right so now let's head back over to our browser and let's actually hit go back and let's actually fill in some information for an actual book here what I'm going to be doing is I'm just gonna be going to Amazon to grab some some information here let's do the first book as Game of Thrones book one so basically just gonna grab the title here I already have the images saved to a folder, but to get an image to follow along, we'll just go to say to the book, go to see all images, and then just save the image. But we got the title, so let's put that in. And for the description, let's actually just go to a filler text generator. In my case, I'm going to be using hipster ipsum. And we'll grab some text here, put that in the description, and the author is George R.R. R. Martin. So now if we create a book, we'll get redirected to our root page and we didn't get any errors. So our book is actually created. And to check that, we can go into the Rails console. Rails console is entered by Rails C or Rails console. And we're gonna do we're gonna 
uh, establish a connection with books. I'm going to do app book gets book dot first. And we, here we can see the book we just created, Game of Thrones, with our description and our author created and updated attributes. Sweet. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to focus on um, displaying these books on the index page. We're going to start by just displaying the titles, but then when we add our paperclip gem in the next uh, couple parts, what we're going to do is we're going to display just the image of the book. But to start, let's just display the title of the book, and we're going to do that in our index action. So to get all the books that we've created, we're going to define an instance variable called app books, and books is going to associate books.all, which is our model, so it's getting all the books in our model. It's going to order it by our created at attribute in descending order. So this is going to display our books from the most recent at the top to our um, oldest ones at the bottom. So now let's go to the corresponding index view template and let's loop through those books and display those. So to do that we're going to do at books Dot each. So this is looping through all of our books which are defined in our index action here. And we're going to do book. Now this is just a simple loop here. And I'm going to add an end statement right away so I don't mess up. And now what we're going to output is we're just going to output the book title. So to do that, let's put a header2 tag in here. And let's going to let's wrap the Ruby code in a header2 tag. And we're going to output book dot title. Now we have a book available because book represents each instance of our books. So if we create one more book or ten more books, all of their book titles will be outputted. So we'll go back over and we'll see the book title for the first book. Sweet. Now let's create another book and make sure that the books are outputting the way we want. So we'll go to again to slash books slash new and let's add the, let's just add the second one. Game of Thrones book two. Grab this book title. Let's add some description. Let's make this one longer. Some description. And let's add the author again as George R. R. Martin. Create the book and we'll see now that both books are appearing and we have the most recent one up top. Cool, cool, everything's coming along very well. So now what we wanna do is we wanna add an ability to view a single book. And what we really wanna do ideally is in, um, in the end application, we'll be able to click on an image and be taken to the show page for that book which has the description and the reviews. But for now, let's just associate this title here so when we click on the title, we'll be taken to its show page. And before I actually do that, I wanna add a little link here for adding a book so we don't have to keep typing in slash book slash new. So to do that, we'll just go into our index file outside of the loop and we're going to find a link to tag. Now a link to tag in Ruby on Rails corresponds to an anchor tag in HTML. So we're going to add the text which is going to be um, add book. Now this is going to be the text that's displayed. So this will be the stuff that's, that would go in between anchor tags. And the second part is going to be equivalent to the href. In our case, it's going to be, again, like I said, we're going to be using those, um, sort of that path shorthand. So if we go back over here, we want our new book. So we're just going to do new book underscore path. So new book underscore path. If we go back over here, we'll see a link, add book. We click on that. We get taken to slash books slash new. Awesome. So let's go back here and let's add that show functionality. So to start, let's go into our books controller. And again, we're going to define a new action, this case called show. And to show a book, we first need to, well, find the book. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a book. And it's going to get book.find by params ID. So this is going to find our book and put it in an instance variable called at book. Now, we're actually going to be finding the book in the show action, and then when we add our update, edit, and destroy functionality, we're also going to be finding the book there too. So to make this code more dry and not to repeat ourselves too much, let's just refactor that right away. So let's go down here to our private method. We're going to define um, a method called find book. And all find book is going to do is take in this code right here. So we'll paste that in. And now, 
we go up to our top and we define what's called a before action, we're going to specify something we want to do before any of these actions are initiated or are used. So before action, we're going to find our book. Now we only want to find the book for the show view, the show action, I mean, um, the edit action, the update action, and the destroy action. Awesome. So now we can delete show from here, and we still have app book available to use in our show view. So now let's create our show file. This is sort of the common workflow I use when creating Rails applications. I create the corresponding action, and then I create the view file. So we'll go and define this as show.html.erb. And in here, um, from our final application, you saw that we had a lot of stuff on here. But to start, let's just um, output the title. And again, we have app book, the instance variable available, and it corresponds to the book we are clicking on, which is why we passed in, if we go back here, params ID. This is corresponding to the ID of the book that we clicked on. So when we click on the first book, the params ID will be one. If we click on the second book, the params ID will be two, and that's corresponding to unique books. So the show view isn't showing every book, it's showing that book that corresponds to the params that we passed in. So we'll also output the, let's do the description, or the author first, at book. And now we're just accessing the attributes using dot notation. And we'll add the description. My freaking typing is bad. So we'll at book dot description. All right, so let's go over here to our terminal and see how we can access our show view. So we look at the show action, it's gonna be slash books slash the ID. So let's access the first book. If we refresh that, slash books slash one. And we'll see the show page for the first book. Awesome, we have our title, we have our author, and we have our description. Now let's add an easier way to get there without having to type in the URL. So let's add these titles here to be a link to the show page. So we'll go back to the index view and we'll add a link to tag right here. Now right here I defined the text in sh like string, but it can actually just be book.title. So we're gonna link to the book.title. This will be the text that is linkable or clickable. I don't think linkable was the right word there. <laughs> and then we're gonna go to our show page, which in our case is book, so it's gonna be book path. But one thing we need to be aware of is the show page is with respect to one book, so we can't just visit the show page. We have to make it with respect to book. In our case, we have book accessible here. So if we refresh that, we'll see that these now turn to links, and we click on them, we'll go to our show page. Awesome. So the last thing we want to do in this section is add the ability to edit and destroy books. So to do that, we'll start in the books controller, and we're going to define a few more actions. We'll do define edit, update. Now edit and update work similar to how new and create work, but not entirely. So then we'll do destroy, which will be our destroy action. So edit and update will deal with editing a book and destroy will deal with deleting the book. So to start, let's, um, well we, in our edit action right now, we have app book available because we are finding the book in edit we're finding it in update and we're finding it in destroy. So at book is available in every single one of these. So in update, what we're going to do is we're going to check if the book is updated successfully. So if book.update, and one thing we need to pass in here is we're going to display the edit view with a form to for them to edit what they already have. So when they submit the form again, they're going to be changing the value of the book params. So we need to make sure that we pass in book params so the book is updating with the new information that the user fills out. So if the book.updates with book params, let's redirect to the book show page, which will be book path with respect to app book, since we have app book available and not just book like we did earlier. Else we'll render a new form. And we'll end. Okay, so this is our update functionality. And let's actually now go ahead and create our edit view, edit.html.erb. Now, like I said, how 
um, create and update are kind of similar. Neither of those are going to have their own view. They're simply using redirect statements. So the form is going to be rendered in edit, and the form is also rendered in new, like we saw. So here we'll just do um, edit book, and we'll render the form again. So let's we'll do render form. If you go over here, we'll see no errors. So edit book is books ID slash edit. So let's edit the first book. Books slash one slash edit. And we'll see all the information filled out here. Awesome. So one cool thing about Rails is it automatically pre-populates your form with the information that's left over from when you created the, the book. So let's just add a couple exclamation points. And we'll click update book. And we'll see we are redirected to the show page. And we have our update successfully rendered. Sweet. So let's add um, a couple links here to edit and delete so that we can just quickly access it and not have to type in the URLs over and over. So we'll go into the show page and let's add a couple link to tags. So link to, this one will be edit, and edit corresponds to edit book path. Edit book path, and this is going to be with respect to add book. And the second one we want to add is our delete link. So we're going to link to delete. Now this one's a little bit different. This is actually going to be with respect to the show page, the current book. And we're going to add a method of delete. The method of delete just corresponds to right here. The destroy action has a verb delete. So method delete. And we'll do a data confirm are you sure. Now the syntax of this isn't too important back here, but this is basically just denoting that we're deleting, and this is going to uh, pop up a JavaScript alert message saying, are you sure you want to delete this? So if we go back over to our show page, we'll see two links, edit and delete. Now delete, we don't have any functionality for right now, but if we click edit, we'll be brought back here. Let's get rid of those explanation points, update the book, and we're back to normal. So let's add the destroy functionality now. And this is going to be pretty basic. We're just going to do, we're going to get the book, which we already have, and we're going to destroy it. So at book.destroy. And then when it's destroyed, we're going to redirect to the root path because the show page doesn't exist because the book is gone. So if we go back over here, this is now wired up. So if we click delete, we'll get the are you sure message. And we hit OK. It deletes book one. Awesome. So with the index page now looping through, all of our books, the show page showing each individual book and having the ability to add new books. That is basically everything we want to do for this first part. There's actually one thing I want to make sure I do. Let's add a backlink here so it's a little bit more easier for the user to not have to go up here and hit this back arrow every time. So let's add that up here. This is simply going to take us to the root path. So we'll do a link to back. And this will become a lot easier when we add our nav bar um, in the next section so we can just have all of our links up top and doesn't have to clutter some of the stuff we have going on with the content. So link to back, that's just going to take us to the root path. Let me go back over to our browser and we hit back, we'll go to the root path. Sweet. So in the next section, what we're going to do is we're going to cover adding users to our application using device. We're going to add categories so we can categorize the books so they're not all just, well, on our root path, we're going to have every single book displayed. But then in our nav bar, we're going to add a little section with categories, and you'll be able to filter the books based on um, three categories, technology, fantasy books, and biographies. So right here, there'll be a link on the screen. You can click on that and be taken to part two. All right, guys, thank you for watching this first part, and I'll see you in the second part.